Welcome into hour number two of the early line, Wednesday morning, September 7th, 2022, roughly 36 hours or so away from the NFL opening kickoff. But as we stated before, Joe Ranieri, there still are Major League Baseball teams playing each and every day and a lot of topics that come up and it's time to buy or sell. Now, my question is, this is one of the most maddening teams I've seen over the past couple of years. It's the Chicago White Sox. Before the season, Joe Ranier, I said, you know what? They're going to walk their way to the division and maybe do some damage as one of those teams that can actually get to the World Series. Got a lot of power bats, power pitching arms, a good bullpen, and an older sage manager, which is probably no longer the case at this point. So my question to you, buy yourself. Three games back to Chicago White Sox. If you want to buy them, Joe Ranieri, to win the AL Central, a plus 450 price. Buy yourself White Sox edition. Joe Ranieri, your answer. I sold the White Sox uh, weeks, <laughs> if not months yeah. ago. Like, absolutely yeah. not. I mean, if you think, you, if you want to buy the White Sox now, do me a favor, just take out the lighter, uh, and burn yeah. the money. Just yeah. burn it. You'll have way more fun watching it go up in flames than betting on the Chicago White Sox, who have underperformed the entire year. And last night, Donnie, was a case in point of why this White Sox team is so infuriating. Terrible defense, lackluster. Cueto's going out there battling, doing everything he can. They can't score a run. They can't score one run there in a part of the season in which they need to show up and show out. So I, uh, they are a, at this point, Donnie, you are what your record says you are, right? You're a mediocre franchise in a mediocre division. I don't buy mediocre, Donnie. I'll tell you right now, and I've, you know, I I told you I picked them to win it before the season, but I've been burying them since like late May. Don't you dare come back and win this division, Chicago White Sox, and make me look bad at this point. Just stay dead and buried at this point here. Now, once we thought we're quite a different few times, or quite a different times here in the NL East, you know, Mets, ah, insurmountable lead. Whoa, here come the Braves. Up, Mets run it back up. Oh, no, here come the Braves even right now on September 7th heading forward. Now, the Mets have one of the easiest schedules in Major League Baseball. Are we buying or selling here? Are we buying the New York Mets or are we selling the New York Mets? And who's going to win this division here? Because if we're looking at the FanDuel Sportsbook at those prices, Joe, minus 220 for the Mets to win the division, plus 170 for the Braves. They're even right now. Buy or sell the Mets getting this done here. Oh, it's so hard, Donnie. Uh, Mm. Now, You mentioned it. The schedule, unbelievable, uh, the way it favors the Mets here. Uh, But they still have three games the week before it's all said and done. Last week is September Mm -hmm. 1st week. I think September 30th, October 1st and 2nd. uh, Three games against those Atlanta Braves. And I do think there's going to be a good chance, Donnie, those three games are for all the marbles. Uh, And I Mm. do think because it favors the schedule, the Mets, if you haven't gotten them already... Um, I would wait, Donnie, until they they get maybe tied here with the Braves. I think you're going to be able to get the Mets, if that makes any sense, and a much better number if they give back one or two more games, and then I would hammer the Mets at a much better price. Looking in the mirror, they are, Joe. 85 and 51 down the stretch they come, as we like to say here. So it'll certainly be interesting as that one winds up. Now, the next one I'm going to talk about, we shouldn't even be talking about this, quite frankly. This should be a 19 and a half game lead like the Houston Astros have in their division, but it's the Yankees and now the Rays and also. Toronto peeking their head around the corner, only six games back here of the New York Yankees as we welcome in the radio audience here, Sirius XM Channel 159 and all our radio affiliates. This is the early line, Donnie Wrightside and Joe Ranieri in our number two. Four and a half game lead. Buy or sell. Now, again, this should be easy, right? Yankees minus 900. Buy or sell the Yankees tripping and ending up in second place here in the AL East when it's all said and done. Oh, it's kind of high to buy minus 900 because um, most people already <laughs> bought the Yankees. Yeah. So it's very exactly. hard to buy it. I, I would, yeah. uh, if I were a buyer in this uh, division and in this market, um, yes, the Rays would absolutely be a team I would look forward to. You know, the Rays had to endure a ton of injuries throughout the uh, season, uh, Donnie. They're finally starting to get a yeah. little healthier. The bullpen is starting to show up again. Uh, yeah, but I also think it's a big caveat. What's the deal with McClanahan? Uh, how is that shoulder? What's it going to be? Because uh, very hard to buy the Rays in this spot if their number one guy 
uh, is uh, a big question mark down the stretch. So uh, I like the raise at the price. I I would just, I've already got Yankee. I already bought him months ago, Donnie. So what the hell am I supposed to do now? <laughs> I don't even know bye, what to do bye, anymore. Bye. <laughs> I don't even know what to do. I gotta tell you too. It's like come on. Uh, the, the Rays are eighteen <laughs> games above five hundred, which is absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't know how the Rays do it every year, but they find themselves in this spot repeatedly, making the playoffs. So kudos to them. Quick thoughts here: the Brewers can still make the wild card playoffs here as they sit three games back from the Phillies and the Padres. Are we buying the Brewers, or are we already sold them, Joe, a long time ago? Playoffs. Playoff? What are you? Are you out of your you mind, Brew? No, no. Yeah. We sell, sell, sell them, sell them. <laughs> Awful team. <laughs> oh, I gotta tell you, I, I agree with you too. Quick on this one: the Orioles are buy or sell the Orioles. Can they still the little engine that could joke? Can they still get in? Buy or sell those Orioles? Absolutely. Make the yes, and buy them on a game by game basis. You'll make yourself Ooh. a ton of cash. Yes, I'm buying the Orioles. There we go. You know what else we're going to be buying here shortly? Week two of the college football season. We're going to take a look at some Heisman odds and also some of these teams ranked versus unranked. Who's favorite and why should they be? Come on and find out next. Right here on the early line. Joe and Donnie in the morning. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it for In game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Are you looking for an edge for football betting this year? What if you could get insider knowledge from former team doctors about the injury mismatches every week? That's exactly what Sports Injury Central can give you. They're going to tell you what games to bet based on the hidden injury advantages. So their team of doctors will provide the data and their algorithm will tell you which games to bet. Against the spread, overs, unders, in-game bets, and prop bets. Sick Picks has it all. So take advantage of their 59% winning percentage over the last two seasons and sign up today. The Bostonian versus the book. My name is Matt Peralt. I'm the Bostonian. Introducing our one and only. He is the book. One Mr. Dave Sherapan. Now we've got the beat behind it, unfortunately. The Bostonian versus the book. The early line. And world will stack up over the next couple weeks. Later in the season, we'll get some pretty big ranked rivalries going head to head. But it's very important to understand that ranked opponents versus ranked opponents early in the season don't matter all that much except for TV, television rankings, or excuse me, I say ratings, where, hey, you're going to want to tune into the top five matchup. And that's going to settle down in college football over the next couple weeks, and you'll know who's who and what's what. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. Keep cashing tickets. Over four and a half for Merrill, minus 105. I was all over this game, and I got to tell you, it was very hard because the uh, Diamondbacks have won eight of ten. They played well. They beat them yesterday, five nothing. I'll give you Kelly on the over because I think the numbers at four and a half, I, whatever. I stayed away from the game, though, based on uh, that high lure of 140 that Vegas was selling. Me. The Sports Grid Network. Time to 
to swing it over to some college football here on the early line. It's Joe Aniri and Donnie Wright. But before we do that, we just had a hot topic here talking about Lamar Jackson and if he is going to get that contract signed before he takes the field for week one on Sunday. Ian Rappaport actually retweeted here. Nothing imminent, Joe, with the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. So as we know, deadlines spark pressure and pressure burst pipes and they might be able to get that deal done. But today it's Wednesday. You got Thursday, Friday, Saturday and early Sunday morning to get that done so something to keep an eye on you know what else we're keeping an eye on here after week zero and week one in college football looks like the sec joe still reigning king with alabama at the fanduel sportsbook plus 160 to win the national championship and now right behind them are the georgia bulldogs at a plus 250 price so if we're looking at the sec dominance here do you still see them as both of these teams, the favorites to win the national championship and the FanDuel Sportsbook does have them appropriately priced here? Um, yes, uh, there is. Now, the thing that uh, is interesting to me, Donnie, about uh, about this is that, listen, we know it's Alabama and everyone else, mm-hmm. right? And, and that's the way it has been for a while with Nick Saban. Uh, but Georgia is in that that class now and it's a very small class and now it's usually just been a class of one with Alabama but Georgia has said you know make room here guys to lose 15 count them 15 guys to the NFL draft playing on Sundays and you slid a whole bunch of new dudes in there like it's uh, like you didn't even skip a beat Oregon is not as bad as they looked in that first game they're not they are going to be They're going to be fine out in the Pac-12 there. They're obviously not Georgia level or SEC level, uh, but they are not a bad football team. And what Georgia did to them in that 49-3 whooping is it goes to tell you guys, there's Alabama, there's Georgia, and now we wait to see if uh, the Ohio States of the world, uh, you know, the the Miami is the U-back, you know, these other... Texas A&M, who they talk a lot, but can they get it done against the two elites? And there are two elites, and the jury is out, I think, on Ohio State still. Yeah, I love these huge market moves that we do have here because they're fun to talk about. And also, as we know, watching Mm -hmm. football over the years, these teams have really improved, Joe, from week one into week two. So I think you're right. I mean, take a look at Oregon, per se, right? Pacific Northwest team, they give them, and I always joke about this, the neutral site game in Atlanta up against Georgia. So in the heart of SEC territory where you're just jumping in your car for a short ride from Georgia, Athens, over to play in the Dome, and then here comes Oregon down, no fan support here, and they get rocked. Now, I don't know what we're anticipating because quite honestly I love to say where I was wrong I thought Oregon was going to be able to hang around the chicken coop per se in that game and they were busted out early in there but breaking in a new quarterback and Bo Nix for the team breaking in new head coach and yes we understand that you know Lanning came over from Georgia maybe his team should have been better prepared there's nothing that can prepare you here as what we see usually from Alabama in game ones in these kickoff classics doing the same exact thing so I think it's fascinating Mm -hmm. that two SEC teams sit at the top of those rankings quick thoughts here because behind them Ohio State at plus 300 under Clemson at 12 to 1. I always think Clemson is one of those more intriguing teams because some people watch Clemson and say, I'm not overly impressed by them. But you have to remember, you can't win the national championship unless you get into the college football playoff. And Clemson playing that ACC schedule, which they should roll through, that's half the battle, Joe, just getting into it for a chance to win it here. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely correct. And uh, But they have, uh, they're going to be tested, uh, Clemson. Uh, we were just talking about it, too, off the, uh, uh, out of the break there, Donnie, where, mm-hmm. talk about quarterback controversy. Clemson's going to have one here in the next couple of weeks, although I don't even think yeah. it's a controversy. I think the, the freshman you saw, uh, Klubnik, come in uh, to the latter half of that game, Yeah, that's the quarterback for Clemson. If they're going to make a run here, Donnie, if they're going to go toe-to-toe with University of Miami and and Mario Cristobal, the U with Van Dyke, who I think is also a Heisman, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, dark horse there, um, they've got to be able to throw the ball. Uh, DJ ain't throwing the ball, uh, and that's not going to get it done here against some of these uh, better teams, even in the ACC. I mean, Hartman coming back now for Wake Forest. You better be able to throw the ball in the ACC, guys. Uh, and that doesn't appear to be what DJ does well there for uh, Clemson. So Dabo's going to have a decision to make. And Ohio State, I do think the offense is going to get better, uh, Donnie. I do think Al Golden there uh, of Notre Dame, uh, the D.C. there, did a fantastic job 
of mixing up the looks, dropping everybody back. He had two safeties back. He wasn't going to get beat over the top. It took them a little while to adjust. But Ohio State, it was the defense was the question mark, right? Jim Knowles comes in, 3-13 of on third down, keeps him under 100 yards rushing. The defense for Ohio State, it's back. That's what I wanted to see from them. I do think Stroud and company, they will get better as the season moves on offensively. But now defensively, they got that whole package. So, uh, yeah, Ohio State is going to be in the conversation, I think, when it's all said and done. But they got to beat Michigan. Yeah, and also quick points there on Clemson. I mean, that is a championship-ready defense here, and you're right about that. Yeah. You need a quarterback that's going to be able to step up in the big moments. And also, Dabo Swinney has done a fabulous job at recruiting. That team is a Ferrari on offense. You just need the right driver in the you know pocket, so to speak, to let right. that happen. And I think that might be changing here. We'll keep an eye on that as it goes. Talking about the Heisman race here, and two guys, usually it's Bryce Young. We talk about C.J. Stroud. Right now at the FanDuel Sportsbook, they're even up here. Plus 300 on Bryce Young to win the Heisman, plus 300 on C.J. Stroud. But my my question to you is, Anthony Richardson had a big day. Three rushing touchdowns on the ground, an upset, if you want to call that, over a top-10 team down in Florida. And Stetson Bennett at 20-1. to Stetson Bennett really caught me by storm because I thought it would be one of those, hey, Bennett's going to you know, man the fort here, get the ball where it needs to be, we'll play good defense, and we'll wind up in the SEC championship game. Eye-opening performance out of Stetson Bennett. So my question is, do those two guys actually have a legitimate chance to take down a Heisman Trophy? Uh, yes, uh, they all do. And I think Anthony Richardson is unique from the perspective that uh, we are already getting the NFL talk, uh, where they rank this guy is uh, certainly going to be a top 10 pick in the draft when he goes. He's 6'4". Cam Newton is the name that keeps getting thrown around with him, and I can see it because mm-hmm. he's, he's a building. You know, he's 6'4", he's 240 pounds, he can run, he's got a cannon of an arm. And he seems to be taking the maturity step, right? I mean, that was a big, big win in a big, big moment against uh, Utah. He's ultimately going to be judged on, from a Heisman perspective, what does he do on the road against some of the other SEC defenses, not Utah's, right? So he's got an opportunity to shine and, and go right up the board. The problem with Stetson Bennett is we're going to be talking about Georgia's defense every week. And he's going to get overshadowed, right? I mean, that no matter how well he plays, it's going to be that defense. And um, that's going to be, I think that's going to hinder him. But don't sleep on guys like Van Dyke in Miami uh, who can go toe-to-toe with Clemson if they win, if they beat Jimbo, let's say, in another week or so. Uh, Van Dyke is a guy that's absolutely going to be in that Heisman conversation for sure. The kid can absolutely sling it. And he is a pro-style passer, so he's going to be getting a lot of NFL clout as well. Yeah, playing in those big games certainly can move up that profile for a Heisman Trophy you know, winning Oof. quarterback. All it takes is against a ranked team to go nuts, 350 and four touchdowns, and you put yourself right Bingo. in the building there. Now, some fun, yeah, some fun topics here, Joe, we're going to talk about coming up because if anybody has ever seen here, and quickly we'll make this point, the Iowa Hawkeyes scored seven points oh. against San, or, uh, excuse me, South Dakota State, a 7-3 to three game. Their team total is 22.5 for Iowa State. Is that, do we just go under just because it's the only way to go here? Absolutely uh, correct. There's no other way. to. We've seen this movie before with Iyer and Spencer, Spencer Petras. I can't believe they brought him back. Under, under, and more unders when it comes to Iowa until further notice. Team totals, too. Under. I mean, the, on my Twitter profile here over the past couple of years, there's been nobody that's gone in on Iowa football more than me because I say to myself, when you, know, you have the head coaching staff come into your living room as a quarterback, running back, or wide receiver and say, look, we're going to put you in that. I say, man, well, I just watched the game where you scored seven points here. I'm not coming to that school here. It's amazing how they still have a competitive program, but that's Big Ten football, as we like to say. Two more topics we'll talk about after the break here, and then we'll get your Major League Baseball preview for Wednesday underway. It's the early line right here on Sirius XM Channel 159. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College football today. Alabama and winning SEC 
champion. It's the island of misfit tour. Fantasy sports so, today. You have to understand that. Four dollar gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. Two when this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash of In the injuries. Game, line, but you take all the points. Access. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In game go. live, prime time. I'm feeling a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But like, boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. I don't know how it's going to work out for him, but I just don't see him being on the field nearly as much as he was last season. Maybe the touchdown numbers will, will have him in that tight end one category. Earlier in his career, he would have gotten out. I mean, I guess he had 108 rushing yards, but six rushing touchdowns in his career. So it doesn't give you any upside there. Carr, to be honest, for me, just is not a guy I ever end up targeting. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Tom, you're going to have three American League East teams in the American League playoff picture. How competitive will that division be come October? Tyler Glass now for the Rays, who was their ace last year, uh, is set to make his AAA rehab start uh, this week. And if he's able to come back for them, he was a legitimate Cy Young candidate. So they lost Shane McClanahan, who was dealing with this left shoulder injury. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. EJU's final statistics, 19 for 32, 209 yards and a touchdown, 13 carries for 28 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Listen, Cade Klubnik was out there for just one series, but if you were watching this game, I thought he looked far more explosive at the quarterback position. He just looked really better than DJU. Only on Sports Grid. The card here in Major League Baseball, which we'll get to in just a few moments here. The early line, we still got some college football news to get to. One of my favorite times of the year is you have the handicappers and the people knowledgeable about sports betting. And then you have just the average Joe looking at games. And they say to themselves, now hold on, Joe and Erie. Let me get this straight. Tennessee is going on the road unranked, playing a ranked Pittsburgh team. How can this possibly happen? Minus six and a half for Tennessee. And quite frankly, the FanDuel Sportsbook opened this line at minus four and a half in the favor of the Tennessee Volunteers, but now sits at six and a half and going into Pittsburgh. When you see lines like this, does this automatically draw Mm -hmm. you towards Tennessee? Or is this one of those where you say, now hold on, maybe a little bit of disrespect here going on for the Pitt Panthers? Mm, Well, I mean, listen, uh, I'm not too sure Pitt should have won that first game. Uh, Let's be realistic here. Um, They were actually outplayed in a number of areas in that spot, but they ended up, uh, listen, you got the job done. The defense, which has always been the hallmark of Narduzzi's teams, right? They showed up and they showed out in the end when they needed it uh, the most. But boy, oh boy, again, we have an SEC team in Tennessee playing an ACC team in in Pittsburgh, and they are hungry. Um, I believe uh, they've got what now? Is it uh, Hooker's back there for Tennessee? I didn't, I thought he was really good last year. I thought he was pretty good last week, too. 18 to 25, 221. Uh, 10 different receivers on Tennessee caught passes last. I. I think they're going to be able to hang. I'm not sold on the Pitt offense like I'm sold on the Tennessee offense, which means that Pitt defense is going to have to be even 
better, but I'm not buying it. I mean, home is nice. Being at home is nice, but I just think too much talent, too much speed also for the Tennessee Volunteers. I think they end up getting it done, uh, and if they don't, it's because the Pittsburgh defense plays out of their mind, but I didn't get that vibe from them. They're capable, but I didn't get that vibe last week. Did you? No, SEC versus, you know, ACC usually handles no. the tide. The one thing I did like about Pitt last week, Joe, that front four was getting some pretty good pressure against West Virginia, yeah. but obviously West Virginia certainly not an SEC team. Another team, which I love to talk about these games as well, because ranked Kentucky going into Florida. Now, Florida's got back-to-back -back home games. Now, you saw last week upsetting a top-10 team. Now, they're going to try to do it again here, but they were favored in this one now, open up at 6.5 at the FanDuel Sportsbook, now down to 4.5 here. Mm -hmm. Is this one of those jokes I I wanted to ask your, your opinion on this as well. We saw Florida win last week. Did they get that little overheight bounce into week two? And should we be worried about that? Or what's the real Florida? Is it the three touchdowns on the ground for Richardson and then beating a top 10 team? Or are they going to bounce back to reality for what we thought they might be entering into the season? It's amazing. We, people love betting week two in college football. And you know why, yeah. Donnie? The yep. overreactions are over the top. And we love it every year, which means you're getting value on teams um, that you didn't just a couple of weeks ago with look-ahead lines there. You had mentioned it already, the money coming in because of what? Yep. You beat Utah at home. Uh, this Kentucky rivalry has actually been a pretty darn good rivalry for Florida. It wasn't for years, uh, right, Donnie? Kentucky would simply come yeah. in and be a doormat every time they came exactly. to the swamp. Uh, but it is not. The Dan Mullen years changed that here uh, for Kentucky. And, uh, yeah, I think the look-ahead line was a lot closer to and the, re the reality of what this game should be. Florida is in a prime letdown spot. Uh, and, by the way, so is uh, so are the betters who couldn't wait to run and bet them uh, because Anthony Richardson is the greatest thing in the world. You know, he had to come back and win that game. Let us not forget there. They did a really good job of limiting what Anthony Richardson could do in that game. I think the Kentucky defense going to be even better. Um, and I think they know how and they've got the confidence to be able to do just that. Uh, go and beat Florida I think you're getting some value here in this game here. I do like uh, Kentucky to, if Richards is not on the field, how important is he going to be? Because the running game of Kentucky, that's going to be their number one uh, priority. And we'll leave us uh, to me, um, maybe on par with the guy he's playing against. Yeah, interesting stuff here. As we head into week two of the college football season, no better place to be here than the Sports Grid Network to get all that information, just like Joe gave out there. Listen to us. We'll put you on that right path here. But it is September. It is Major League Baseball season. There's a full card today, and it's time to make that transition over because there are some pressure cookers here that are going to happen over the next couple weeks. And one just might be the Mets and the Pittsburgh Pirates. What, as you say? How about this? tied in the standings those Braves and the New York Mets double header today for the New York Mets now we could preview game two and say Jacob DeGrom is a you know minus 900 favorite here against the Pirates but we won't do that let's start with the first game 12 35 today and I'm looking at this game from a Mets perspective not that I want to pay that price on the New York Mets but I do want to take a look at a team total because in the first game that we took actually you know what did they switch this up on me because this is what I'm looking at right now I'm seeing DeGrom as a starter in game one on my book here. What does Fit? you have fan to by any chance with you? Yeah. So the, okay, let's keep Bassett. it the same then. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I see Bassett we'll keep, 1235. We'll keep it the same. Perfect. Yep. All right. So I didn't have it wrong here at that point, but sometimes some of these things do interchange when they're talking about the doubleheader. But if we're looking from Wilson as a starting pitcher here for the Pittsburgh Pirates, 5.39 XFIP over the past 30 days. Lefty and righty batters, Joe, 340 to lefties as a weighted on base percentage to righties, a 384. I think the Mets get off the schneid early here. They need this game. They can't roll into game number two here with another loss and technically a half game back to the Atlanta Braves here. Your thoughts on this doubleheader today and maybe being pressed because you can't just walk into a doubleheader and say, oh, we're going to take both of these games. It's rare that you do that, more likely getting a split. Yeah, so the problem is um, I'm not worried about the pitching. I'm, I'm worried about yeah. the bats that I've seen to have gone completely cold here, uh, Donnie. And listen, if you if you can't score, you can't win. And I, even if DeGrom is on the mound, and by the way, DeGrom, one in three in six career starts against these uh, Pirates here with a wow. 2.43 ERA. 
Bassett, by the way, is actually, he did a really great job against the Dodgers in that last game. Uh, two runs, six hits, six innings. He's also 5-0 and with a 2.38 ERA and 28 strikeouts over his last seven games. So Bassett really starting to come into form right now. That could be uh, the guy more so than DeGrom, who's had his troubles against this uh, Pirates organization. But I think Bassett is the guy, especially if he's going in this early game. The Mets win game one, Donnie. They're going to win game two. And so I think exactly. it, the pressure is on Bassett to keep the, the bats down, do what he's been doing here over the last month, and get his team a win. They don't have to score 90 runs to beat the Pirates. Get it done, Bassett, and let DeGrom uh, do what DeGrom does here and get the get the sweep and get back on track. Yeah, be much needed here because as we sort of segue into the next game and where it makes some sense, Atlanta and Oakland here. 337 start out there on the West Coast. And this is Strider versus Waldachuk. So you say, well, who is Waldachuk exactly? That's why this line is a minus 295 and probably going to cross over that minus 300 threshold by the time the game gets underway. 979, 980 on the rotation. The total in this game listed at seven. Now for me, I look at this game and I say, well, the matchup is going to be Strider against his bad offense for the Oakland Athletics. When Joe last night, I said the same thing. Oh, matchup mm-hmm. in this game is going to be between Wright versus that bad Oakland offense here. Well, they scored nine runs yep. last night, 19 total runs overall. This game sits at a seven. Obviously, we do think the Atlanta Braves are going to win because Strider's been fantastic and probably going to win, you know, the NL Rookie of the Year over his own teammate at this point, which is incredible for what the Braves do in that farm system. But again, it's a pressure situation. It's a younger pitcher. They need this game. There's a good chance that by the time they end this, that the Braves will have a full game lead over the uh, Mets at this point here. Talk about this game a little bit here and 19 runs last night. Are we looking under seven here or maybe you think more runs are possible? So funny, uh, Waldachuk, interesting, uh, went to school at St. Mary's, not too far oh, from uh, Oakland yeah. Coliseum down here. So he's a local sure. kid. And, oh, by the way, he was uh, part of that Frankie Montas deal uh, with the Yankees. So uh, having an opportunity to come home, uh, he's from the area there. Uh, he did pitch against, I think, uh, the Nats on Thursday and did pretty good, four and two-thirds uh, there. They ended up losing 7-5, but he certainly held his own. The thing that worries me here, uh, and the Braves, uh, if you've noticed, they haven't lost since they moved Acuna to the DH spot, I think a little over a week ago. They have been absolutely crushing it. So, uh, you know, they're trying to savor him. This whole DH in the National League, Donnie, we weren't sure what the effect was going to be, but we are really starting to see some teams benefit and pitchers, by the way, uh, not having to worry so much about bullpens blowing games in the 7th, 8th, and ninth, because you don't have to pinch hit for the pitcher anymore in the National League. But what worries me is Iglesias, Minter, and I believe Kenley Jansen had to play last night. They had to go in and throw some innings uh, for the Braves. So uh, it's going to be up to Strider to be able to hold the fourth down on what is a pretty free-swinging A's team. The A's couldn't score at home. Remember that? They were like, no, they were laughable, none. but... They are swinging the bats. They are, although I do think they lost Loriano last night, so you got to keep an eye on that. But I, you, you would think over, but can we expect uh, another nine-run performance by the A's against Strider? Oof, yikes. Yeah, looking for that true pitcher's performance out of Strata. And by the way, you know, the Marlins and the A's were basically the same team. Nobody could score. Well, the Marlins still can't score. It looks like the A's busted out last night. Yep. But also, talking about the DH quickly in the National League, you're right about that. Ronald Acuna is still struggling with that knee injury. He doesn't have to play the field. And also, look past the Philadelphia Phillies, who are trying to fight for a wild card position. Bryce Harper would already be out for the yep. season with that elbow injury because he can't play the field. Now, at least he could be a DH each and every night and still keep that hot bat in the right. lineup. A lot more to go on this Major League Baseball card as we cover it. A lot of things up in the air. Who's going to win the big? Come on, Mac, let's do it. It's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 
pregame, pregame. Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. If Clemson wins the ACC once again with only a single loss on the record, I guarantee you the Clemson Tigers will be a member of the college football playoff this year. Right, taking the over on that one, to be quite honest with you, there's a lot of questions in Houston that they're still trying to figure out. It's a young team, and I think it's going to be kind of an up and down year for them. The morning after, only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Pharrell, coast to coast. You lose to Syracuse, your season's already over. I mean, they were favored in that game by five, and they got whacked by Syracuse, and, and the Orange looked good, and Louisville didn't look good. Now, I don't know what to think uh, of Louisville after that performance. I don't know about writing them off completely. I think they had a bad road game, but we'll see how they look this week if they turn it around. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. We'll have to see. A lot of ranges of outcomes, I think, for him as well, but essentially not a starter in fantasy to open season. Yeah, he, he started out the season throwing 20 passes against the Green Bay Packers, five of those going for a touchdown. He had a four-touchdown game against the Washington football team, but uh, only got over 30, 30 passing attempts in one game. It was a 13-10 to 10 win against Seattle. The Sports Grid Network. Baseball's on the mind right now. We got a lot more games to preview here on this Wednesday. Card is showing Donnie here in the AM, right here on the Sports Grid Network Series XM Channel 159 out west. Last year, these two teams, talking about the San Francisco Giants and the Los Angeles Dodgers, were battling it out, going over 100 wins to see who was going to win that division. Now, that's no longer the case at this point, and more likely the Dodgers shaping up their pitching staff here before they head into the postseason. And why is that? Clayton Kershaw is going to be on the mound today. Last 30 days coming back here off the IL, a 440 X fifth number, which isn't too bad, but his strikeout percentage, Joe, pretty good. 32% of the batters he's faced, he has struck out. Only 19 batters faced over the minimal time that he's had, but he has, as we like to say, handled his business today. If we're looking at that price point, a minus 270 with a total of eight and a half. By the way, that eight and a half seems a little bit high to me. I'm leaning on more of an under between these two ball clubs. Any opinions between the Giants and the Dodgers today, Joe? Well, you know me. I mean, number one, uh, Cobb going for the uh, for the Giants mm-hmm. today. He's actually been yeah. really, really good here. Last couple of outings, uh, seven hits over his 12 scoreless innings here. Um, so he's actually done a really, really uh, good job of uh, minimizing damage. The thing with Cobb is you got to worry about him that third time through the order. That's when things start to go crazy uh with him but uh, prior to that I, i'm kind of with you donnie the eight and a half is a bit head scratching here uh, he's had some pretty good success here in the past i think it's a first five under situation as well we all know the giants 
10 to, I mean, look, they hit a home run on the first pitch. Brinson hits the first pitch off of Anderson, hits it for a home run. And then they got to wait, you know, to five innings later until Crawford hits a home run. And then that's it. Um, so they're not exactly a prolific offense. I don't think they're going to be prolific against Kershaw either. I think this screams first five under in this one, Donnie. There you go. So looking at some unders. I like the full game under. Joe likes a little first five under, and certainly that correlates. I would love to see a nice little mm-hmm. one to nothing game after five innings setting up that back end here. But let's continue down the Major League Baseball path here. Next game up, the Chicago White Sox and the Seattle Mariners. Also another afternoon game, 4-10 start out on the West Coast. So obviously this game will be starting at 1-10 Pacific. If we're looking at the pitchers in this game lined up, looks like it's going to be Kopech versus Castillo. I love Louis Castillo. 3.41 uh, X number, Joe, over the past 30 days mm-hmm. in Major League Baseball, close to a 30% strikeout rate. Also, get this, 66 batters he's faced from the left-hand side. And again, Castillo's a right-handed pitcher, a 288 weighted on base percentage and an ISO of 117. Fantastic. From the right side here, being with Castillo, 57 batters he's faced. That's a 235 uh, ISO power, no, excuse me, 235 weighted on base percentage and an 057 ISO power number. If there's not a lefty going up against the Chicago White Sox, usually it's a fade for me. But if we're looking at that price, a minus 205 for Castillo tells you everything you need to know about buying or selling. Can the White Sox get into the playoffs? I don't think they win today. And quite frankly, if I'm just looking at Castillo versus Kopech, give me the first five innings. I'll take the run line here on the Mariners. Yeah, and Kopech hasn't pitched. Uh, you know, he was shelved August 23rd with a uh, with a bruise, a right or left knee, one of the knees there. So this will be his first, uh, you know, foray back onto the mound there. He's never – he pitched once in relief a couple innings uh, against this uh, Seattle team in this spot. So uh, now he's going to the mound, having to go up against Castillo, and I'm with you, Donnie. That number speaks volumes. And I believe Lewis Roberts uh, also – Left in the middle of that game last night, too. So here we go again with the injuries for the White Sox. Um, yeah, I. it's very hard um, not to like uh, Seattle in this spot. They went out to get Castillo to win games and close things out just like this. And, um, yeah, it's going to be hard uh, to go against them. And I'm with you. Give me the uh, – Give me the. I'll lay the half a run in the first five. I think the White Sox yep. will handle business and get to Kopech early. Yeah, we'll see if that happens here. Mariners, we're all Mariners up here. And the Mariners headed towards the playoffs here. And obviously, yep. Chicago White Sox looking on the outside, is what to say, looking in. Let's keep going here. Boston and Tampa Bay, 640 starting tonight. And if we're looking at this game overall, like Tampa needs every win they can get if they want to chase down the New York Yankees. But if we take a look here at the lines, a minus 172 price here currently for the Tampa Bay Rays and a total listed at seven. And that comes right down to pitching here. Now, say what you want about you know, the excitement factor of the Rays in that ballpark. They play pretty well down there, and typically it's tough to hit home runs. If we're looking at Springs on the mound today for the Tampa Bay Rays, a 3.41 XFIP number, 30% strikeout rate. 319 weighted on base percentage of lefties. Keep in mind, he is a lefty. To righties, even better. A 251 weighted on base percentage and an ISO of 059. We're looking at this lineup here, the estimated lineup, I should say, Joe, for the Boston Red Sox versus left-handed pitching over the 30 days. They've been terrible. Tommy Pham's got a 174 ISO power number, which is average. Take a look at the next few batters. Redugo, 120. Storia, 0. Devers, 095. Martinez, 067. Arroyo, 056. And Wong, a 0. Tampa Bay, I think they're headed for another victory. And if I'm looking to isolate this game, again, matching up maybe a first five innings, but I wouldn't even mind taking a run line for the full game for Tampa Bay going up against Boston today. Yeah, 11-4 and four the Rays are against this Red Sox team uh, this mm-hmm. year. 12 runs in a couple of games already. The bats are starting to heat up. Now, Rasmussen uh, was scheduled, but it looks like he's on the uh, maternity list there with uh, with his wife having a baby, so... Uh, Springs is going to be thrown into action. He may have to go a few more innings than usual here. They did do the whole uh, bullpen route um, last night. So uh, it's going to be a a group effort pitching-wise. But what is to lead us to believe that uh, they won't get to Pavetta, that they won't uh, have the lead again in, in here? They've done a really good job against this Red Sox team and... Very hard to back uh, anything to do with the Red Sox or the Red Sox bullpen, Donnie. It's been a great bet to wait until you get 
to that latter half of the game and then just fade the Red Sox bullpen uh, and expect uh, expect Tampa Bay to come out on top and finish the sweep here. Yeah, I talk about so many times here in the month of September, Joe, the haves and the have-nots. Some teams actually yep. playing for the postseason. Other teams just playing, basically, for the offseason. You're probably yep. getting that with the Boston Red Sox and the Tampa Bay Rays. And also, the next game we're going to talk about right here, the Miami Marlins taking on the Philadelphia mm-hmm. Phillies. So the Phillies, quite frankly, got a gift last night. Bryce Harper with a simple fly out down the left field line. Yep. Somehow turns into a double, comes around on a Gene Segura. Uh, base hit, so 3-2 win for the Philadelphia Phillies. They'll take that each and every time. But the one thing you can count on every night, it seems like, Joe, from the Marlins is they can't score. Now, Falter is going to be on the mound for the Philadelphia Phillies, who isn't a very good pitcher, but you still need some batters that are going to be able to do some damage. Now, the question is going to be, can the Phillies hit Rodgers, who Rodgers only has 23 batters faced over the past 30 days, an XFIP number of about, looks like a four. So, I mean, Lefties, two that he's only faced. It's a zero weighted on base percentage. Obviously, he needs more than that to get a good read. 21 batters from the right side, though, a 273. If I'm looking at any Marlins game, even though, Joe, it's in Philadelphia in a smaller ballpark, not hot conditions today. It will be in the low 70s. I look towards that total of eight, and I say to myself, or it's seven and a half, which is now listed at eight at the FanDuel Sportsbook. I think it stays under because the Marlins getting like two runs is like a huge party for them. Yep. Um, his last start there, he he wasn't terrible against uh, Tampa. Five hits, one run, six innings there for Rodgers. Mm-hmm. But he's going to have to be he's going to have to be exceptional uh, here. Let's be realistic. I think the another walk off situation for the Phillies last night. They're starting to feel it. I can't trust Miami at all. Uh, to score enough runs. So I think there's one of two ways to go here. By the way, over a 7 ERA in, I believe it was, eight career starts against the Phillies. They see it well with Rodgers. I think the Phillies team total might be the way uh, to go uh, up and over here. I believe four and a half, somewhere in that ballpark there. I think they're going to have some uh, success today hitting the ball more than they had last night. Yeah, the haves and the have-nots, two straight games. We talked about that now. Now they're both the haves, as we would like to say. The Toronto Blue Jays and the Baltimore Orioles, both trying to get into the playoffs here. Toronto mm-hmm. trying to push Baltimore more out of the way. Baltimore trying to climb back in to get within two and a half games. Now, if we take a look here, the interesting part is Baltimore, kudos to them. They didn't get any help from the front office at the trade deadline. You're not looking at front line starting. You know, Braddish is on the mound. Today, Kramer's on the mound. But they've been handling their business. Look at Kramer, Joe, over the past 30 days in Major League Baseball. 3.73 XFIP number. But take a look at these splits here. 35 lefties he's faced. And again, Kramer's a right-handed pitcher. A 203 weighted mm-hmm. on base percentage with an ISO of 029 to right-handed batters. A 298 weighted on base percentage and an ISO of 141. So when you're lining it up, it doesn't really matter all the much that if you dominated left-handed bats, because as we know, you're getting at least eight right-handed batters in the lineup tonight for those Baltimore, excuse me, for the Toronto Blue Jays. I do think they are a valid option tonight, but what are you going to get out of Manoa? We know the talent here. Take a look at this. I mean, we're talking, weighted on base percentage, 325, Joe, is the average. So anything Oof. above that as a pitcher is bad. Anything below that is very good. 50, 50 batters that Manoa has faced over the past 30 days from the right side, a 185 weighted on base percentage in an ISO of 022. Lefties to say, well, maybe they're hitting better. An ISO of 130. Should be a pretty good pitching matchup. And today, a lot of these numbers I'm looking at, Joe, I'm leaning towards the under here again. Not a bad way to look. And don't forget, there was a little bit of a uh, little bit of brouhaha last night in the seventh oh, inning right. where the benches all Sorry. cleared. You know, there was a little bit of a uh, didn't like mm-hmm. getting shown up after striking out Chapman. So uh, that probably will carry over because uh, there's a lot of animosity between these two teams. But, you know, you mentioned it. Manoa at home, one thing. Manoa on the road. Another thing. The mm-hmm. problem is in yeah. Manoa, I, I believe he's pitched now in the month of August. He had consecutive starts against Baltimore in the month of August, and he lost them both. Uh, so they seem to have uh, a pretty good handle on what Manoa is dealing. On the road here, not to mention Kramer. I mean, the kid has been interesting, to say the least, uh, this year. But he did beat the Orioles back in August 16th, seven innings. Uh, of just two-run ball against them. So this is, could it be something else for the Orioles to be in a spot to split this series after losing Mm. the doubleheader opener, losing those two games? They win last night. Now they get a chance to go out and do what they've already done twice, and that's beat Alex Manoa and the Toronto Blue Jays, only this time 
at Camden. So, you know, as a dog, uh, Donnie, with the Orioles in spots like this, it's always Orioles on the run line, Orioles are running a half. The little engine that could. Could it be those Baltimore Orioles making it into a wild card race? Quickly here, we'll get to this final game because finally I'm digging on a little bit of a total here, which is a team total. The Washington Nationals and the St. Louis Cardinals in this game. Obviously a heavy favorite here for the Cardinals, but I'm focusing in on that Cardinals offense, Joe, going up against Abbott. Like six, six. XFIP here for Abbott over the past 30 days. Decent strikeout guy. He actually has some decent splits between lefties and righties. But when you take a look at that XFIP, sooner or later, it's going to catch up to him. I'm going St. Louis team total over. Any thoughts on this game between the Nats and the Cards, even though the Nats finally got beat yesterday? Wow, how about that? Yeah, five of their last six they've won, actually playing some yeah. pretty good uh, baseball. But I think that ends now. I mean, Montgomery uh, was the trade of the uh, you know of this year yes. at the deadline. Let's face it, what he's done for them and how he's elevated this staff is unbelievable. And I'm kind of with you, man. I think there's uh, there's a couple of ways to play this, um, but I think all roads lead to. The St. Louis Cardinals and Montgomery dominating early in this game with the lead. So I'll lay the half a run with the Cardinals here in the first five. We got everything covered today on a Wednesday. We talked college football. We talked a little Major League Baseball, some NFL action, getting you ready here on the Sports Grid Network for an exciting football season. Wednesday mornings won't be the same without Joe Ranieri. Thank you, Joe Ranieri, for joining the show and waking up early with us on the early line. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game. Take a four and a In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. It's a hint of skepticism on these numbers that so heavily favor Buffalo in pretty much every category. I know if they won the coin toss, you think they would have won, but they didn't. They could have just stopped the Chiefs from marching what felt like a thousand yards in four seconds, and they would have won the game. And who knows what would have happened against Cincinnati and then potentially Los Angeles. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. I never expected Stetson Bennett to completely have his way with his former defensive coordinator, Dan Lanning's new football team, throwing for 368 yards, two passing touchdowns. It was great to see because we didn't know what we were getting out of Georgia. You know, usually when you win a national championship, you're going to graduate a lot of players to the first round, which they did. How do you replace mm -hmm. those guys on defense? Well, how about three points against an Oregon Ducks team? Only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Rick Hara with your daily numbers game and a gaming partnership that has a lot of implications to it. Bet MGM, kudos to them, landing the Kansas City Chiefs right before the opening of the season for Geha Field, as well as the Chiefs partnership among one of the largest, most expansive regions in the country, Kansas, Missouri, all over the Midwest. A couple of issues. First of all, they outbid and out relationship some of the other biggies. Good for them. Second, Remember, Kansas just approved and is implementing gaming for themselves. Missouri close behind. And it's not just the Chiefs, but it's the opportunity to relate to the states that they are betting in. And third, maybe most important, remember, Kansas has a facility development fund, which may not be used to build an entirely new stadium across the border in Kansas, but there might be some opportunity for some betting kiosks or otherwise. We'll see how that all works. 
Bottom line is, it is a big deal. segment of the day for a Wednesday right here on the early line Sirius XM channel 159 on the sports grid network and as we take a look today we talked over a lot major league baseball you know college football NFL action and then we're going to hand it over here to Ben Stevens and the morning after but before we do that you know the NFL is on deck tomorrow night we're going to see a banger of the game or at least we anticipate between the Buffalo Bills and the Los Angeles Rams but this weekend The Green Bay Packers are playing, and Aaron Rodgers loves him some rookie wide receivers. Listen up. Quiet. Devontae Adams, you're a great wide receiver. Jordy Nelson, thank you so much. Greg Jennings, even back in the day, right? Randall Cobb in his prime. No, 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 no. That's not who we're leaning on here for the upcoming 2022 NFL season for the Green Bay Packers. It's players like Christian Watson, Romeo Dubs, and also Samari Toure out of Nebraska, who they drafted in the seventh round. And Aaron Rodgers is saying all the right things. Boy, oh boy, these players are really stepping up. I'm excited to see how they do come Sunday. Well, Sunday, you're going to be in Minnesota. There's going to be 75,000 plus fans in a dome screaming where you used to look over to the left or to the right. Make eye contact with Jordy Nelson or Devontae Adams. Give him that little wink where he knew that was a seven-yard slant pass. Give him a little touch of the helmet. That's a fade route here. Give him a little like, hey, uh, scoot in here for a seven-yard slant and turn it into a post pattern. You knew right away at the snap. Now you don't have that. Let's see how these young rookie performers are going to perform on Sunday when you're in a divisional battle, which you absolutely need to win game number one against the Minnesota Vikings to reassert your dominance in that division. Could we see Aaron Rodgers on the cusp of winning a third straight MVP trophy? And my goodness, if he does that with this group of wide receivers, it will be a Herculean effort to get it done. But could Aaron Rodgers be up for the task? Maybe so. He's shown the propensity to do that in the past. But boy, oh boy, for a quarterback of this stature, heading into the season with these wide receivers, it's going to be a fun one to watch you play out. But nothing more fun than Ben Stevens and the morning after coming up next. 